Hello guys, welcome back to our Learning Netrunner series. This is game three, so if you haven't seen the first two or the kind of general uh, tutorial for the game, be sure to check that out. They are best taken in sequence. I am going to be playing Anarch today. Feels great. This You're back my, home. My faction. What's your, and, uh, what's your runner over there? Uh, Valencia. Valencia Estevez, the Angel of Cayambe. And she is one of the cooler runners, I think, in the game because she has two kind of special things about her. One is a 50 card deck size. So it actually has, has more cards in the deck, which is generally seen as a bad thing because you just have less consistency. So a lot more going on in the deck. And then also starts the game with a bad publicity, which is a special mechanic Yikes. that we haven't seen yet in the series. And so we're gonna get to see that. Zach over there is playing Scorpius, Wayland. That's right, I'm, right? Ba I'm also back home, and long this, favorite. This is, this is kind of the, our two favorite factions for the past, what, five years now? Since the start. I can't believe it's been that long, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, this is the faction outside of, so Shaper was the runner faction that appealed to me, and then Wayland, for some reason, it's because they're about the money. It was, it's all about it was the like money. like the economic exchange. But, uh, you know, they had a rough, rough patch, rough five years, stock wasn't doing so well in the market. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But Tell me about Scorpio. I hear they're, they're pretty okay now. Uh, well, they have a 40 card. So uh, less cards in the deck, so more card. consistent. Right? Uh, and they have an ability whenever a runner card is trashed from any location, you may force the runner to remove it from the game instead of adding it to the heap. Use this ability only once per turn. Wow, so, so like if I was able to maybe trash a program, I could remove it from the game, and let's say I got rid of all your ways to get through barriers, then you might potentially be locked out from you know playing the game. That would be a, a bad thing. It would be so fun for me. Wayland often kind of just not, uh, not fair, you know? Just trying to kill the runner or assassinate the runner or destroy all my programs. What's up with Wayland as, being? As a, as a capitalist, I would have to ask you, <laughs> what is capitalist. fair? You know what I mean? What, what really is fair? Uh, I think, market systems, et cetera, I think et you get what you earn, and you know, sometimes <laughs> there's some casualties along the way. So Now, here's uh, what you guys need to know, is that these decks are built from one core set, one revised core set, one deluxe box, or uh, we'll Campaign get into expansion. a bit of a caveat there, and then one data pack, and in this case is what, Crimson Dust, I think, is the... Crimson is a data pack that we both use. We both use the, that data pack, and you can find those deck lists in the description below, so you can check that out. With like a whole blog you. and a lot of thoughts. We write about we write about the decks, we tell you how they work. I'm uh, sure with Wayland and Anarch, those blogs will also just be more... Uh, Flowery. Flowery. It will have and, a lot uh, more extensive. extensive. Yeah. Um, and they, those are, so Revised Core Set, I'm using the Order and Chaos box, which is the Anarch and... Uh, Wayland? Wayland. Deluxe. Yeah. yeah. Deluxe. So that's good. But you're not. You're no, I'm using the Terminal Directive campaign expansion. And that's a that was a very special product released, at kind of the last big box that was released. And it was a kind of take on a legacy game style format for Netrunner. It introduced new cards to the game overall, which is cool. But then it also had this giant kind of campaign that you could play through, corpse and runners going back and forth, and it advances a Telling certain a story. plot that tells yeah. a story. So that's a cool expansion, and not only can you just play through that, it's a good one to just get, play through, and it's actually a really good step from the revised core set just right into that. But you can also then take it into your normal games in Netrunner and use those cards and, and obviously benefit. Which we'll see here, showing. here today. So let's kick it off now. This is game three, so we've been, for the past couple of games, playing uh, you know, kind of fast and loose, with Netrunner, kind just trying to macro show happening. you, yeah, the macro look at how the game functions, not get over, you know, overwhelmed by a bunch of rules and, and structures and timing charts. Um, but this game, we're going to lay out a little bit more of the formalities of Netrunner, how the actual game transpires, what steps do you actually have to res cards and ice and runs and all this kind of stuff. So we'll be doing that. So look forward to getting that final piece of information to make you the best Netrunner player that you can be. All those little technical intricacies can be very helpful. With L5R, uh, same thing. It was once we broke it down, the game got so much easier to me. All right, initial opening hand of five, looking at a mulligan. This I is an insane hand. Agree. It's I'm the, gonna keep it's the this kind bad of boy. insane where I don't know, like it's so weirdly good that I don't know if it actually is gonna demonstrate something that I want to demonstrate. But I'm gonna do it anyway. My hand's great for every reason. I'm, a, I'm gonna do it. Oh man, I'm gonna do it, it's so funny. Uh, okay, so you're keeping your hand. Corp yeah, does decide if they want a mulligan first. I, is this where the, I know there's a, it's a special instruction in the rules where I get to look through my deck and put all my genus on bottom. Yeah, is that's that, right. Is that yeah. this phase? <laughs> no, <laughs> sir, that does not happen. <laughs> um, so you're keeping your hand? Yeah. So then yeah. I get to decide if I want to mulligan and um, you know what, I'm going to. 
That would that would have been a weird weird game. I had three of a single card that it could have been like a grand coup de gras moment, or it could just like just, opening wins the game. It could we just showed you all out. the intricacies of this game. We'll it, see you later. It definitely wouldn't. That's the the good thing about Neverwinter. It wouldn't have just like won the game, but man, it would have made it a weird one. It would have made it weird. It's kind of like that kit game. Yeah, where I got ahead early, and it's like, well. <laughs> This is Good one luck. way this goes. Good luck. Yeah. yeah well, be. you know, you never know. You might hit my six point agenda. You have one of those? The faction might. <laughs> and that then my punitive view, yeah. All right. So there's my mulligan. Uh, I got to keep these cards. Game That's on. That's what I've got. And now we start the game. Valencia does have an ability to start the game with one bad publicity. So, what bad publicity is, in, in terms of the macro kind of understanding of it, is the corporation has been exposed for something, right? So, they are under the gun of Wrongfully. whether it's the press or the public. Anyway, they have a lot of negative uh, you know, associations right now. And so that actually gives me money whenever I make a run to help me on that run. So bad publicity is essentially a credit that can only be used whenever I'm actually making a run on a corporation servers. Um, so that's really handy. It means that my runs get cheaper because I have essentially public opinion behind me. And Valencia, uh, of course, being a reporter type and a, a newsbreaker, from what I understand about her, uh, is going to start the game with one bad publicity. So already knows some of the secrets of the corporation. You can use People that to love our advantage. me, and now I'm going to try to use that to my advantage. Yeah. All right. And so that'll functionally, I have the bad pub, but you basically have it in your credit pool. Right. I just keep it in my credit pool because it's way easier to keep track of, and I just flip it over Once whenever I. Have Used it. Um, now these do refresh every time I make a run. It's crazy. So it's it's really powerful. Um, so let's let's dive into kind of the formal turn structure. I just want you to know, Zach, as a right. as a non-formal player. I am not a formal player. And I want everybody out there to know casual as well. Player. So think of the corporation's turn as broken into three phases. Okay. You have the corporation draw phase. Now, when your draw phase begins, the first thing you can do is you can res cards, you can use act any paid abilities, like and a can, pad campaign, and you can score agendas. If you had an agenda that was advanced out and it was just sitting Somehow. there, you could immediately score it. And that's essentially before your turn begins. All right. So it's crazy, right? All right, good enough. So you can do any of that. Then you, uh, your turn begins, so any of your beginning of the turn triggers fire. So they're pad campaigns, your Adonis campaigns. And then you have, you draw one card. Okay. So that's that phase, right? So I don't have anything installed to do that with. Right, no paid I'll, abilities. I'll go ahead and draw a card. But you do draw a card, correct. All right, so there's your card. I'm going to read this while you continue talking. Then we have the second phase, which is where the money happens. This is the action phase, right? So during the action phase, there's essentially two steps. You have, I can res cards, I get non-ice cards, I can pay paid abilities, or I can score agendas, and then I take an action, and then it starts over, right? So that's kind of the, the circular framework that that uses. And then at the discard phase, you discard down to cards. You can again use paid abilities, okay. res non-ice cards, and then your turn ends. Okay. Right? So I will proceed to take said turn. All right, so first, you're gonna take your first action. Do you wanna do anything before that? Res non-ice cards that you I don't do not. have any of? No, I do not. Okay. I'm just going to install an ice in front of HQ. All right, another opportunity to do anything crazy? Let me think about it. Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Uh, and then I'm just gonna spend my last two clicks. I'm gonna gain two money. Okay. There you go. That was easy. Now we come over to the runner's turn, and it's essentially the exact same thing. The only difference is that I don't have the draw phase because I don't have to draw a card as my first action. You're not being forced into actions. That's right. So we have the action phase where things can happen, then the turn begins, then we start to take actions. I go back and forth on my actions, then I discard down, can take actions again, and then the turn ends. So you see this basic structure happening, and it's pretty much mirrored on, on each side. Sides. So that's nice. All right, so now I actually have to think about what I'm going to be doing here. Um, well, let's, uh, let's do what any good runner would do. First action. Get caught up. <laughs> get caught up in it, right? <laughs> I'm going to pay three. Uh, no, not that guy. I'm for tired of seeing the turtle. Amakua, the turtle, a very important uh, icebreaker for the runner. Probably going to be in the game for a while. Why didn't I cover my hand? <laughs> Uh, second action. 
So now, my, my ability, when a runner card is trashed, I can force you to remove it. Uh, I've heard rumor, when you play a card, like an event from your hand, mm -hmm. do, you have, do you trash it after you use yes. it? Yes, All right. that's right. So if I play an event, you could remove it from the game. May as well. But then like if I hit something that would trash a card, you don't then have access to the ability later on. So that's yeah. a bummer. Yeah, it's a bummer, man. Uh, so second action, I'm gonna initiate a run, and I'm gonna actually walk through it a little bit formally here, All just right. so we can do it. Um, so I'm actually going to reference, there's an FAQ that Fantasy Flight puts out that you can find on their website. And it has, reference guide? it has an updated uh, timing structure. So there is one in the rule book as well, and I'm sure the revised course set will have the most recent one. But if it ever changes, which sometimes there are little tweaks made to it, it will be available in the FAQ. So I printed that out, and I, I'm not even going to make a secret of it. I'm referencing it over here on the side. Getting very technical here. Can't see it really uh, because of camera magic. It's amazing. What all is going on over here that you guys can't see is unbelievable. Yeah, there's wouldn't. a carnival right over there. <laughs> um, okay, so first, the runner initiates a run and declares the attack server. So I'm initiating a run. It's my second action. I've never pictured it as an attack. I and I'm attacking this more server. Volatile. So the first thing we, we have, if the attack server has one or more pieces of ice, we move on to that step. But if it has no ice, we move on to step four, which is here. So at this point, the runner approaches the attack server. So I, I visualize that as like... Here Literally. Here comes the sun. <laughs> yep. the You're server. running. Now, at this point, paid abilities can be triggered on your side or my side. So okay. if there's anything on the board that is a paid ability, we can immediately trigger it here. Then I decide if I want to continue the run or jack out. Now, there's actually a uh, caveat that I'll get into later on that. But the runner continues the run. I decide I want to do it. Let's go. I made the run. I want to keep going. There's then another ability to both res non-ice cards and to use paid abilities. So I have committed to the run, and now you can res stuff up. So if you had upgrades that would punish me at this point, you or could ice. res them. Yeah, well, not ice. You can't res ice like with me. Other being ice, here. yeah. Other, if, if I had ice in this server. If you had ice, yeah, we'd be running a whole, be a whole, a whole new chain. Of events, yeah. But we're at the end of the run, and so we have an ability to use actions, and then the run is considered to be successful. So now anything that says when a successful run triggers uh, would, would trigger. We don't have anything is on the board trigger? here. This is uh, whenever you expose a card or access cards, you do not steal or trash mm. any of them. Um, so then we go to the access card step, that's the final step. And then we'll go to step five, which is the run ends. Okay. So let's access some cards. This is action numero dos. All right, you're a bold one, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Willie. Yeah, I mean, what could go wrong? You know what, Mr. what could possibly happen? I've got a wide open server, I've got an icebreaker right. that- I'm gonna not look. I don't mind if you trash. All right, we access cards, Colossus. Ooh, nice sentry. Six, st or four strength, six cost, plus one for each advancement. That is a cool When card. it has three or more advancements, because I don't resolve the parenthetical text, so you would give me two tags and trash a programming resource. Ouch, so I need to be able to break sentries. That's <laughs> scary. <laughs> um, okay, so then I have uh, abilities here. Whenever you expose a card or access cards and do not steal or trash any of them, place one virus counter on Amakua, and it has plus one strength. So that's my second action. All right, that's fine. For my third action, I will run HQ again. So we'll go through the same steps and all of that happens. I'm gonna rag it this one. Ooh, a hostile takeover. You got it. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> uh, one big one. And because I did steal an agenda, I don't get a virus counter on Amakua. And then, last but not least. Will I hit my hand again? Let's run HQ again. Oh man, yeah. he's a last click runner? This could go so poorly. Hey, there's no scorch in the game anymore, right? Doesn't doesn't much matter. <laughs> All right, what do we got? <laughs> Kaboom! If snares access from R&D, the runner must reveal it. Oh no! Uh, which means if I basically hit it off of the top of R&D, I have to reveal the card. Uh, if the if you pay for whenever I access snare, do three net damage and give me one tag. Uh oh. So are you gonna so trigger it? I'll pay four. All right. Because I like tags and net damage. And All right. Now. T this is trashing them, right? So I can trigger this mm -hmm. off of this? This is good. All right, so first card. What's that do? <laughs> oh, currents are bad. Ah, I had this against me the other day. You had four, four bad pub on me. Two. Spooned. Spoon. Trash is a code gate. All right, three. Oh, well, don't mind if I do. Um, Whenever I've had worse as trashed by uh, taking net or brain damage or meat damage, I draw three cards. All right, and I'll remove that. Thank you. I've had worse. Ah, back up to card. I but love it. But you do also get this lovely tag. I sure do. All right, over to you, Zach. 
All right, mandatory draw. Okay. And you have how many cards in that hand there? I got four cards. All right. No problem, right? Not a problem. So that is the power of snare also, by the way, and also the run last click. Uh, be careful. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. now I'm tagged, so if there's something uh, like, ah. As my first two actions, I'll play Hunter Seeker. All right, what is that? As an initial class play this operation, spend a click. Play only if the runner stole an agenda during his or her last turn. Trash a card. Uh-oh. So I'll trash here. I'll trigger my ability to remove it from the game. Yikes. One icebreaker out of the game. And then I will spend my last click to gain a money. Okay. All right, no big deal, no big deal. Okay, first action, I am going to run R&D. I will not res, do you wanna keep right. going? Yeah, so let's actually run that Yeah, that's I was like, I'll always get into it. So they're running, it's so hard actually, so we were talking about this, Legend of the Five Rings learning series was easier. Because we were, because we were literally learning the game. Yeah, we weren't five years deep. With Netrunner, it's just like, we immediately get that lizard brain going and it's just like, all right, let's play. We're just playing Netrunner on camera. Uh, so what happens is the runner approaches the outermost piece of ice, which I'm doing now, then there's a chance for paid abilities, so that can happen. Then I decide whether to continue the run or jack out. So I'm going to continue the run. Now, important to note, and I didn't actually know this, if this is the first piece of ice approach in the run, I actually cannot jack out at this moment. So if there are abilities that when you're approaching ice, you can use them, and then like, this abuse of like You've, approaching, jacking out, sure. you can't do that, right? So I'm actually glad to know that. Um, then approach ice can be resed, and you can use paid abilities, and you can res non-ice cards as well. So what would you like to do? You like to res that ice? I'll do none of the above. All right, he's not resing it. I think it's because there's no money for the ice man. Uh, then we uh, check to see if it's resed. If it's not, we move on to the next piece of ice. There is none. I'm gonna decide to continue, successfully access a card. What Show me is what this? it is, baby. This is the first click. All right, I see a card. It's a, it's a good card. You're good. All right, I hope it's money. <laughs> Second action, I will... I think I'm just gonna draw a card. Third action, I'm gonna play Mining in Accident. Play only if you made a successful run, the court must pay five or take one bad publicity and I remove this from the game instead of trashing it. And because I can't pay five, I will have to take a bad publicity. Mm, another bad pub for the corporation. Yeah. And then my final action, I will, I'm tempted to keep, keep pressing here because I feel like you're so exposed. Uh, I'm just gonna gain one credit. Okay, start of my turn, I will draw the card that you've seen. That is a good card. You are not <laughs> wrong. Can't use it yet though. <laughs> um, let's just gain three credits and hope you don't have, uh, I guess, is account siphon gone these days? It's gone, Whew. totally gone. The pressure is removed. All right, first action, draw. Second action, draw. Third action, let's gain a credit. And last action, let's play Vigil. This is my console. When your turn begins, draw one card if the corp has cards in HQ equal to his or her maximum hand size. Mm. So good, good, good to know. If you have options, I've got options. Am I good to go? Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll draw a card. Click one will be hedge fund. Okay. So I'll gain four. Click two will be install a piece of ice on my hand. It's on Colossus. Mayhaps. <laughs> Click three will be to gain a credit. All right, just getting the money, huh? Preparing myself, my defenses. <laughs> I have my lawyers on the phone. All right, first action, let's draw. And then second, Third and fourth. What I think I'm just gonna here? get some cash. Okay. You're, Cause you're out of money. Yeah. That could be bad. But I have all this bad pub. And then I'm gonna discard down for the turn, which is actually not trashing in terms of your ability from, from everything that I understand. From, about the from game. my working knowledge of the rules. And I'm gonna discard a scrubber because I just don't think you're gonna have a lot of trashable cards over there. All right, mine? Yep. I'm forced to draw, of course. I'm just reading. Yeah, we actually, I don't know what's in Zach's deck and he doesn't really know what's in mine, so we're giving you the raw experience here. All right, um, 
Let's just play a little game, shall we? Sure. Sure. Um, I'm going to advance this piece of ice. Twice. Twice. And gain a credit. Okay. So, that taking could, the advance action. Could be bamboozled. Advancing ice. Could be, any, I mean, it's probably just an ice wall. Really it, it needs three, you know. So my first action, uh, first of all, do you have how many cards are you in? Four. All right, that's not your max. I did not meet your condition. First action, I will gain a credit. Mm -hmm. Second action, I will gain a credit. Third action, I will play Sure Gamble. So I'll pay five, and then I'll gain nine. All right, uh, I'll trash that Sure Gamble. But there's no recursion in the, in the game anymore, you know? I've heard of a thing called uh, same old <laughs> same thing. thing. Same old thing. Same old thing is sure gamble, that'd be epic. Uh, and then I'm just last, trying to get rid of cards, I don't know. I will pay two to remove one tag. All right, didn't want to get burned. Yeah, so I'm less scared now. All right, um, mine? Yep. Mandatory draw. Let's see what this bad boy is. <laughs> Got two guys on the board and already looking. Yeah. <laughs> I know a Colossus is in play. So some of this new Wayland Ice is actually really scary. I'm personally a little bit worried about it. Um, hmm. So what happens if I have a full hand when you go? I just draw a card. I don't like that. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't like giving you anything. Keep playing with none options. I don't like giving you anything. <laughs> hmm. That's really how I play games too. It's just like, just don't give your opponent anything. Yeah. Let's install, advance, and gain a credit. I feel like that's that Colossus or something in my head. This? Just, just keeps saying. Would it be the fact that it has three advancement counters on it? Yeah. And it gets better with three advancement yeah. counters? Although, to be fair, I think there's multiple ice in my deck that do There is the same thing. How many cards you got in your hand? Four. All right. So my turn begins. Uh, first action, I will draw a card. Second action, I will draw a card. Ooh, nice. Third action, I'll play Liberated Account. <clears throat> so this is play 16 on it, and then you take four with an action. Click. So it's a super sped up Armitage code busting. Mm. I just put four, four counters on there because it's easy. And special. Yeah, Liberated, woo! I got the credit card, and last I will gain four from Liberated Account because I want to have some cash. And it's over to you. Mandatory draw? I've got all these bad pub, but I'm not, I don't have the ability to run because you trashed my breaker. So it's like, I feel like I'm just sitting on this money, burning a hole in my pocket. I'm not using it. Let's, I think it's. it's, it's had kind of that early game splash. And now we're just kind of like. Yeah, we had a lot <laughs> happen up front. And then, it, well, the fact that I basically spent my early money removing your board. Yeah, and Snare slowing it, slowing it down to you. Yeah, uh, but I'm happy that I got rid of. Old turtle. <laughs> Old turtle. <laughs> Old turtle man. Mm-hmm. Let's install here for one, and then we'll spend two clicks to gain two credits. All right, so Zach is building probably like a scoring style server. So this is the kind of server that you start to put in place when maybe next turn he's gonna play an agenda and you know start to say, hey, you can't get in here, which he's pretty much right about right now. <laughs> um, how many cards you got in your hand? Four. All right, still four. Yep. All right, first action, I'm gonna diesel to draw three. All right, fine. I'm curious to see if you get into Breaker City here. Nice diesel splash there, by the way. Thanks. All right, second action. I gotta remember what's over here. All right, it's been a minute since I played that. Yeah, let me know what is over there. Let me tell you. Second action, I'm gonna run R&D. Five credits, just kidding. Um, I'm just gonna face check it. Yeah, that's fine. Don't be scared. I'm just, it's a little shadow. All right. Uh, all right, so sentry, three cost, one strength. It has two subroutines. The first one is I gain two credits. Let's approach the ice, shall we? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, so we can do paid abilities. If you have any of those that you want to do, that's good. Um, I can't jack out because of the first piece of ice that I'm encountering during the run, obviously. The approach ice can be resed, which it just was. You can also play abilities and res other non-ice cards. And then we check to see if it's resed. If it is, we encounter it. So you'll notice this is an important step. Now we're encountering the piece of ice. Uh, and that means when encountering conditionals now meet their trigger. So if anything on the board said when encountering such and such happens, it would happen now. 
Icebreakers can interact with the encounter dice, and I can also use other abilities, paid abilities, both uh, I and the Corp. Then we resolve all subroutines not broken on the encounter dice. So I'm not gonna use any icebreakers, I don't have any, and then we start to resolve subroutines. So there are two here, the Corp gains two, so you can gain your two credits. Thanks for doing business. And then it's a trace of three. So I have a zero link. So this, if we just wanna look at it, starts at three, stack them up. You start at three, I start at zero. What click is this? And this is my second click. And I will take a tag if I fail. So do you want to pump this trace by investing credits? I do not. It's a trace three. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pay three because the way that I'm looking at it is if I take this tag, maybe by my next click I pay two and in an action to shake it. So I'd rather just pay one right now and not have to deal with that. And another thing to remember is that this is during a run. So I do have bad publicity. So you spend two of those. Really yeah. important. So I'm going to spend one, two, three. And so now I have met the trace which means that the results do not fire and we've resolved all the ice. So I move past it. I decide if I want to continue or jack out. I want to continue. I assume you want to see So let's it. access cards, shall we? Okay, good to know. Thank you very much. And then third, third woo. Always makes me nervous when they're hitting the top of my deck. <laughs> a little three point glory run there. That's right. Uh, third click. Let's go gain four. And the last click, I'm going to install an ice carver. Mm. All ice will be minus one strength. You love that card. I so love it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Just fundies. All right, mine. Uh, I owe you one card. All right. It's going to be a retrieval run. Going to be less useful in this match. I, mean, I can't trash that, right? You cannot. All right. It's a discard. It's not a trash. Start of my turn, I will draw a card. Oh, yeah. That is a card of my dreams. Let's... Install here for one. Okay, keeping the servers fresh, eh? And then I will gain two credits. All right, so play, playing it cool. Just got a remote server rolling over just, there. Just cruising. <laughs> yeah. uh, how many cards do you have in hand? Four. Sure. All right, four. Only four. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna, that's my new hand size, First, you aren't aware. <laughs> first action diesel. Man, you've been Draw seeing all the diesel. Cards. At some point, you're going to pass out. I, too I much, think Too many so, energy yeah. drinks here. I had many friends who drank too many energy, energy drinks. Um... Let's see, second. Also known as Gen Con. Second action, that's absolutely true. Um, do I want to try to get weird at all? <laughs> I thought you were done with college. <laughs> These are from downtown. Good jokes. Second action, I'll gain four. I don't know where the Go jokes are coming from here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, third action. I'll play a Gordian Blade. I love that program. Last action, I'll play Data Folding. If I have two unused MU, I gain a credit at the start of my turn. That card seems all right. And then I have five cards, so it's over you. Start of my turn, I must draw a card. Hmm. <laughs> it's really a liability having this out more than it is helpful, but I just, I feel like I can't just continue to draw and not play stuff because I need this. I need these cards eventually. Code gate, code gate. <laughs> Yikes. Um, hmm. Now we get to watch, we get to watch what Zach does. You know, you sense the hesitation, can you feel the, can you feel that, that just energy, that nervous energy? Not knowing what to do, Gordian Blade, just all the plans are, are over. Probably now trying to get me to steal an agenda somehow so you can trash it. <laughs> Hunter Seeker. Mm, I would love for you to score an agenda, particularly another one point agenda. Um, yeah, let's just do this. I'm gonna install here and gain two credits. All right, how many cards do you have? Four. All right, uh, at the start of my turn, uh, when it begins, I gain one credit from data folding, so that's nice. I don't get to draw for Vigil, so bummer. Um, first action I will draw, second action, second action I'll draw, I need the, I need the, the cards. Did you not have enough cards? Third action, I'll gain four. All right. <coughs> 
And the last action, I'll install a data <coughs> sucker. I hear that card's good. It's really good, and I will discard a vigil for the end of my turn, and I'll pass to you. All right, start my turn, and I must draw. All right, uh, I will spend my first two clicks to advance. I'll spend my third click on a Trick of Light. Ooh, hello. And then I will score Armored Servers. Uh oh, what does that mean? Place an agenda counter on Armored Servers. Uh, when I score it, host an agenda counter. I can use it. For the remainder of this round, the runner must trash a card from his or her grip as an additional cost to jack out or break a subroutine. Ooh. Use this ability only during a run. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Powerful, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are not kidding these days. Goodness <laughs> gracious. What is this madness? <laughs> what is this? That makes every run suddenly very risky. Ah, that's crazy. In that right. wild, that's every subroutine. So, how many cards do you have in your hand? Four. All right. <laughs> so, start my turn, I have two unused in you. Now, I have five in you. I have plus one for my console and four base, and I'm using two. So, I have three unused right now. So, I gain a money. Um, first action, I'm gonna play I've Had Worse the Hard Way, which I hate to do. Mm, but these cards, what I, are you looking well, for here? I'm looking for a way to break that Colossus. I need something. Mm, you want the Century Breaker for the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the Turtle. Uh, or the Turtle, either one would be fine. Um, well, I trashed the Turtle. Second action, draw. Third action, man, this is just the wrong order of everything. <laughs> like you drew the cards in the wrong order? Yeah, it's just all of the tools without the icebreakers, which happens sometimes. Um, Especially when the icebreakers are being punished. Yeah, I've got to try to find one. Worse. Third action, hmm. Third action, let's run archives. Okay. And I'm just gonna approach, I'm going to get the data sucker ability here. Whenever you make a successful run on a central server, place one bias counter on data sucker, and then I do access all those cards, but I don't think there's anything that I care to see in there. Nope. And then last action, I will actually do that again. Getting the, the tokens going. Yeah. So archives a lot of times can, can trigger effects like this. And I will discard a... Worked, and a day job. Love that art. And a stim hack. Wow. Everybody? All right, uh, start my turn, I have to draw. What is this? Madness. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna advance that ice a couple more times? Is that actually a Colossus? I told you it was an ice wall a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, all right, so we will... Install and gain two money. Okay. Over to me. How many cards do you have? Four? Four. The big right. four. Data folding will trigger. So but you have forced me to like keep playing. Like these these eyes ultimately came down because it was like, I may as well and not give you an extra card. That's right. Uh, first action, I'm gonna diesel. I'm gonna trash that. Take a look here. <laughs> okay, it's gone. <laughs> For real. <laughs> For real. It doesn't really matter. I just like the using the ability on your turn for some reason. Second action. Let's sure gamble. Money. For some money. You got that. Century Raker coming in hot. Third action. All right. We've got the turtle. And Last action. You're gonna get frisky here? I'm gonna run archives. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna hit a central, it's gonna go here, and that's gonna go here. So it's over to you. Doesn't that have to, I guess you're accessing these cards? Access cards, yeah. Now I gotta protect my archives. Mm -hmm. Start okay. on trying to draw a card. Sometimes you can, basically it's a choice now. So actually this is a really important moment in the game. So let's think about Netrunner for a second. If this is an agenda, which it, it may well have been. Zach can score it out. It's a 3-2, like an atlas or something. So it could score that out. If he does that, it gives me open access to archives, which then likely gives me open access to both R&D and HQ. So that could be a somewhat risky position. So a lot of times in Netrunner, it's not even always about 
threatening to get into this remote. It's about what are the consequences if you don't protect what's happening over here. And that is probably one of the most important lessons in Netrunner that you can, you can do. It's about adapting and shifting focus to various places. All right, that's wrong. That's very true, because I now have a conundrum on my hands. It must be true, then. <laughs> Mayhaps. You feel that conundrum? Do you feel the conundrum yeah, noise? This is the hard part it's of it. It's beautiful. It's the hard part it's of that beautiful right conundrum here. noise right there. Uh, I'm just going to advance three times the score. All right, so it was the Atlas. So it's, it's happening now. Yeah. Pressing the tempo, as we say. That's, that's right, as we say. Now I need three points. How many cards do you have in hand? Five. Hey, what ding, good ding, news. Ding, 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 ding. That's so why you check. At the start of my turn, I'll gain a credit for data folding. I have five MU, and I'm using three, so I have two open, so I gain a money there. And then I will draw a card, because Zach has cards equal to his maximum hand size. And so I'm basically, just so you're aware, I forewent the protection here, mm -hmm. uh, not wanting to seed tempo. Yeah, and I'm kind of giving you open season for, very for much a turn, right? These are all virus. <laughs> yeah. So I still can technically you could clear. Clear, but then I have four shots on archives to, to bring do it, it back again. up. So it becomes a real problem. Like this is the problem with Anarch and viruses too. Until you have your centrals locked down, if they can find a way in, they can build that board right back up once everything's set up. Um, so my first action is going to be a run on uh, R&D. I'm going to declare a run here. So we go through the encounter step or the approach step. I can use paid abilities, you can as well, and then you have the option to res the approach to ice. How many cards are in your hand? I have five cards in hand. Uh, six cards in hand, actually, because of Vigil. Uh, I will not res. All right, so no res. So now we go to the next piece of ice. I can, at this point, use paid abilities. Then I have the option to continue the run or jack out. Uh, and then if I continue the run, which I'm going to, I encounter the ice. Icebreakers can now interact with the ice. So I have a one strength sentry here, I have a one strength Amakua here, and I have an ice carver, so it's technically zero strength. So I can break it every way from Sunday. <laughs> I'll spend one bad publicity, because I have that credit, to break the corp gains two, and I'll go ahead and spend one to break the trace as well. So I've broken both subroutines, it cost me no money. Now we have a successful run, so I will have successful run triggers. Data Sucker will get one there. Do I have anything else that triggers on a successful run? No, I do not, so I'll access cards. All right, that stays. Woo! But Amakua, because access cards, goes ahead and gets a counter. All right, for my third action, I will play a mining accident. Oh no. You can either lose five or give me another bad pub, sir. I feel like this is gonna be followed by that current that's gonna give me minus one hand size for every, uh... Oh, yikes. It's like a better account siphon, really. I'll take a bad pub. All right, and this is removed from the game. And then last action, what do we want to do? Do we want to take a shot at HQ? If we do that, we risk, we could hit the armored server trigger, we could hit another snare. End up tagged, that would get rid of a data folding or an ice carver maybe. But also wouldn't be that bad of a deal, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, I would like to run HQ. Let's do it. Last click, the thing you're not supposed to do. The one thing we said do not do Do as ever. I say, not as I say. So his strength is two now, <laughs> it's a minus one. Yeah. You have the data sucker. Uh, I won't res. All right, no res, I can continue or jack out. I will continue, successful run triggers. Data Psyker gets a token and I will choose to access cards here. Let's get this guy. Ooh, a punitive counter strike, good to know. And Amakua, because I access cards and did not trash or steal, will get a counter. And I'll pass it over to you, Zach. You see the system starting to work. Yeah, I am forced to draw. That's a card that I like to see. Always the money. That's right, you saw the card. Yeah. I yeah, got it. I was like, how did you know it's that? It's a hedge fund. <laughs> How did you know my secret? <laughs> All right, let's start playing the game. Hedge fund for four. You said you like Wayland because it's all about the money, right? I do like the money. Let's install here. Uh-oh. And let's install, just doing math here. You gonna plop a snare down over there? 
over here. Bamboozle me. That would be the score of the century here. Um, or are you going to keep it in your hand where all agendas go to die? I'll just use my last click to advance here. Okay. How many, uh, how many cards you got over there? Four. Four. <laughs> Back, back, to, back to the balance here. All right, starting my turn, I will gain a credit for data folding. First action. Let's run HQ. Me old hand. Yeah, I don't want to say right. it's It was a punitive. Um, so there's three other cards that I don't know. I will not res. All right, so I will choose to access, successful access. Get me a data sucker there. Let's take this guy. <laughs> Punitive again, no information. Or oh, maybe there's two here. in here. I'm waiting, could, that could be I'm waiting, true. Waiting on the real turn here. Second action is turn HQ again. Uh, I won't res again. All right, successful access. Look at these viruses just getting out of control. <laughs> oh, uh, Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's. I, that's a corset. That's an original corset piece of life. Third action, let's turn R&D. This? Yep. Oh, shnikes. Uh, I won't res. All right, won't res, so won't res. You can res. Bad pub your way in. I will uh, encounter the ice. I'll break two. All right. And then I will access, well, first of all, I'll successfully uh, access, and I'll Be look. a snare. I'll steal it. Oh, yeah. Scored points. <laughs> now the clock's on. And then last click, I might just go right back in there, since I can see a, a fresh card. I know you've got the punitive, and you've got some money, so I might want to... I want to chill out a yeah, little bit. A double punitive on four <laughs> points could be, could be righteous. That would be really funny. <laughs> bam, bam. Uh, last click. I'm just going to gain a credit the hard way. All right. My I'll turn. I'll pass it over to you, yeah. I will draw. Mandatory. All right. So now, like, Hunter Seeker is on. So Zach could trash or breaker. He could purge virus counters. A lot of good options. I, I was planning to purge. That was the OG plan. Well, look, it's out of control. These viruses are, are ludicrous. Yeah, but I'm not going to purge. All right. Uh, step one, I'm going to spend two clicks for Hunter Seeker. OK. I'm going to trash the turtle and a root from turtle. the game. <laughs> Another turtle down. <laughs> <laughs> turtle, turtle. <laughs> uh, and then as my last click, I'm going to play IPO. So I spend Ooh. eight. It ends my turn. But I spend eight and then gain 13. So I'm going to net five. But you gain a ton of cash. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Count my digits. IPO. All right, great. How many cards you got public. in hand over there? Three. All right, so I won't draw from Vigil, but I will gain one from Data Folding. So get some money there. You look like you're setting up for a little punitive Counter-Strike nonsense. Well, punitive gets worse the more points you have, right? Because like the most points you can score in a, a single turn right now without it's me true. winning is is three. You could offer me a three pointer right now and do for a, a double, double for, for sixes. Hey, I've been known to kill kill people that way. I know, I've been there. Yeah. Uh, first click is draw. Second click is mimic. Mm. Third click is R and D. Barrier could could shut me down here, but I do have a could gate breaker and a century breaker and a whole lot of card reduction of strength. I have five cards in here. What click is this? Third. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> no easy choices in this game. All right, I'm not gonna res. I'm just gonna risk. All right, now my bad publicity or arc here because I'm I'm making a run. Uh, so I'll encounter the shadow, I'll break both subroutines for free, and I'll access. Okay, that stays. I got my successful data sucker there. Out of turn. And then last action, I will... I don't know, I don't think you have any... I don't know what the Wayland like kill cards are anymore. Um, last action, I'm going to play a liberated account. All right. Turn my turn, I will draw a card. Hey, my old All friend. All the money. My old friend. Oh, man. It's this weird balance of wanting to purge and having too many things to do. That's right. Uh, let's, what, what type of ice are you, my it's friend? It's a sentry. It's four strength. Hey, 
You know nothing, John Snow. <laughs> he, gets, he gets plus strength from this advancement. <laughs> I wish I could purge advancement counters. Like that? Yeah. Well, like oh, these. these. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> why can't the runner have a have a laugh? I wish I had my turtles, Zach. I am glad you don't. That net runner side, just getting it done there. Uh huh. <sighs> it hurts my brain. Um. I'm just gonna purge. It's like we're playing Hold'em and we're we're all in. I'm gonna make you earn this. Okay. Um, let's see. How do we want to do this? I definitely want to see if I can keep the pressure on. First action. I'm gonna gain four. All right. A second action. I'm gonna run R and D. See what happens. Could be devastating, but otherwise it could be. I will not rest. All right. I just hope there's not an agenda on top. Encounter shadow. Uh, what break. click is this? Uh, this is my second click. All right. Uh, break, break. Gain on a successful run here. Oh, I didn't do data folding. Hold on, let me let me get that. Yeehaw. The start of my turn, I should have got a credit. And you didn't have five cards, did you? Nope. Okay, good. A little takes you back. You're at access? Yeah, that's access. Okay, I like that's that interesting. Um, good to know. All right, moving on. Hmm. That's a little bit troubling. <laughs> what madness is this? <laughs> I'm curious what that is. Second action. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's run HQ. Spend the money. You would very much like that. Let me look at my hand here. <laughs> cards in hand? I have four cards. What click is this? This is my third click. Money, run, run. Oh, man. Approach to ice can be rezzed. You can also use paid abilities or res non-ice cards. This could turn things sideways for me. Uh, I will not res. So you're saying I could steal an agenda? This is click three? Click three, yeah. Well, not exactly. All right, continue Maybe. the run or not. Uh, I'll choose to continue. Successful run will get me a data sucker counter there. We will access cards. And where's my die? Where's my lucky... My lucky random number generator. Uh, this guy, Hadrian's Wall. I'm guessing that wasn't the, the wrecking That is card. not the card that could wreck <laughs> things, no. You've seen that, bad boy. Uh, third action. I thought that was your third click. Or sorry, fourth action, it absolutely was. Watching you. Thank you, fourth action, I'm gonna gain four. All right, mine? All you, yeah. I like the much more, oh, that card is a card. I don't know what you can do with it, right? Like, yeah, I know like, that you can. Uh, yeah, I get it, that's funny. It'll cost you, though. Oh, man, this is funny. You have 10 money, you can technically get eight more. I'm confident in your ability to do bad things. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Where's Corroder? It's gone. Oh, it's out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I've been worried about something that doesn't exist. Welcome to the new world order. <laughs> it does not exist. That Hadrian's Wall is tough no matter what. All right, uh, install advanced twice. All right, so that's a problem because I've got to check that. <laughs> and the reason that that is is yeah, because- Yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, so if that's a three-point agenda, which it may well be, then Zach would win next turn if he successfully does that. So this is really dangerous and it's, a problem for me because it could also be a trap. Like it could be a, a June bug, it could be a brain damage win. It, it could, could be, be a one point agenda. It could be a one point agenda, <laughs> yeah, which I, I don't doubt. And then you could have a punitive thing going on too. Um, so starting my turn, how many cards you got in your hand? Four. Still? Convenient. Only four? Yeah. 
Still. Okay, first action. Hmm. Let's see if I have to worry about... I don't think that's that big of a deal. First action, I'll draw. Second action, I'll run the remote. <laughs> Let's just look at it and see what's going on. Um, and I want to draw in case like there's an armored server, or in case that's a, a net damage card, that could be a real problem. Okay. Eight for the Wall of Thorns. Eight for the Wall of Thorns. So it's a barrier. You don't have a barrier breaker out. First subroutine is do two net damage. You've laid a trap. All right, first net damage is day job. Second net damage, dice, dice and membership. membership. No big deal. Do you want to try uh, removing these from the game? No. no. I'm hoping that you make more mistakes. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Is there any way through this? If that's a three-pointer, I guess is the question. Or maybe this winning winning yeah, lot is right be here. over there too. So I've got to look at my ultimately my options, right? This is the problem. So I can't get through that barrier that barrier, and I don't have a way of figuring that out. So um, I. Probably just have to start looking for points right now. You have two clicks left? Uh huh. So, do I just go ahead and check RD probably? Or not? Third action, let's run RD. I won't. I won't res, but this actually brings up a timing question. Yeah. Let's say I wanted to use this token. Uh -huh. When would I spend that? All right, so let's look at it. Uh, approach the outermost piece of ice and already approaching the attack server. That's what I'm ha what's happening right now. You can use uh, abilities right now, but you don't have to. I decide whether to, you, you decide whether to res the ice or not. You decided not to res the ice. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next thing. So now we move on to the shadow. So I approach that piece of ice. You can use abilities right now the runner decides whether to continue the run or jack out. So you don't want to use this until I've decided to continue the run. So I decide to continue the run. I'll go ahead and use the token. Then approach ice can be rezzed, actions can be used, and then non lice non cards, like these, these kinds of things, can be rezzed as well. Okay, I'll go ahead and use this. So that's where you use it, and what does that say? Uh, for the remainder of this run, the runner must trash a card for his or her, from his or her grip as an additional cost to jack out or break a subroutine. Use this ability only during a run. Okay, so counter is used. Then players uh, check to see we're doing it, we're encountering it. Icebreakers can interact with the encountered ice. So in order to break it, I have to discard cards from my hand. That's what you're saying. Yep. Mm. I will choose not to break any subroutines. Okay, so I'll gain two money. And then uh, trace three. Trace three, do you want to pump it at all? No. All right. This is I'll bad pump it out. three credits, access the top card. It will stay, and I will have my successful run there. And then last action, um, let's go to HQ. All right. I, you approach, you have to approach. I will not res, so you'll get to access card. All right, me. successful access. I will get a data sucker token, and I will get a C source. All right, so now essentially what probably happens is Zach wins the game. Uh, that's <laughs> what we're looking at right now. We uh, at least see. that's what I'm worried about. And go ahead. All right, have to draw. Oh, he saw the IPO. Uh, and you are correct. So I'll advance this three times and, and it's score a big graft. graft. Yeah, which is great. When what does that score, actually, what does it do? When, when you score a graft, you may search your deck for up to three cards, reveal them, and add them to HQ. Shuffle wow. R&D. Nice. So I get to search through, find three cards, and go to town. So this is, this is a kind of a classic game of Netrunner, honestly. What happened now, like I feel like I was very well set up. I didn't have, because of your Scorpius ability and those Hunter Seekers, like I didn't have a way to get past a certain piece of ice, which you can then use to install Wall of Thorns and go at it. And like I was getting early accesses, like I was getting a lot of early accesses, didn't see any agendas. Yeah. And so you didn't have to, if I had had, you know, you had to force these ice to be resed. Yeah then you wouldn't have been able to afford the Wall of Thorns, right, ultimately in the end. And there, there were definitely a few times where, you know, I had the three-pointer in my hand mm -hmm. when you were running, and I had it set up where I knew you didn't have a barrier, or you were unlikely to have a barrier breaker. Yeah. Because the turtle was gone. And twice. I wonder if there is one in there. Uh, and I took a risk, but the, the balance here with this deck, which is part of why I like Wayland, is if you go get the agenda, 
if you don't go get the agenda, I win. Mm-hmm. If you do go get the agenda, I have ways to penalize that. So right, like it, the punitive. I had punitive, and I effectively was, I only had one. So I need to have to deal with the Wall of Thorns. And if I had my agenda counter, so mm-hmm. I could at least make you take two net damage total to yeah. come and get the thing. Yeah. And so depending on the cards in hand and what was going on, even with a single punitive, I could have punished you. Of course, I could have drawn into another one. Luckily, I had the secret I've had worse in hand. So Just the punitive out. was ready. Yeah, you were ready for it. But yeah, Wall it. of Thorns is tough. And this is actually an interesting thing because my only barrier breaker in here is the Amakua. I've got three copies, right? So by getting rid of it twice, right, that you, that slowed you down, but then I had literally one ice type that I simply could not get through. And I think that's a lot of times what's gonna happen with Scorpios, is yeah. you can target one breaker, and then, like, this Wall of Thorns is so safe. That's right, even an ice wall, mm-hmm. once you can't get through a barrier, is a one cost you can't get in. Yeah. And that's that's the, the meta level goal of this deck. And even on the turn one, I knew I had the one point agenda in my hand, and I had a snare. Mm-hmm. And I had the uh, seeker to get rid of a yeah. program, so so it's tough no matter what. I, I actually kind of wanted you to install an icebreaker and hit me so that I had a chance to to trash it like yeah. that. Yeah, and that's that's honestly that's the thing about Netrunner too. If you were playing Corporation, it's important to remember that it's not about keeping the runner out necessarily. Not completely. You know, like that's never going to work. You can never lock completely out like a, a wily runner, right? Like yeah. a good runner is never gonna get locked out. But you have to weigh the consequences of, is it worth spending the money now to res that ice versus what, I, I, what else I could be spending that money on? And is there actually a decent chance of them having a successful you know, run whenever, whenever this transpires? So like if you have five cards and one agenda in hand, nah, maybe you let them in, right? I, I had in. four cards with an agenda. Yeah. And it's like, well, he has a 25% <laughs> chance, but like, I, I, I didn't have the money to do what I did and also read this mm-hmm. piece of ice. By the way, for your own reference, was not... Ooh, what's uh, a Hordem? Oh, good job, Gordian Blade. Yeah. So you... I had this this ice, and then the turn after I installed this piece of ice, which was an enigma. Oh, it's so good. So I had it locked down. You, I had no idea. I was and, playing all around that early piece of ice that I saw. A hundred percent. And that, that's the funny thing of, like, you put me in a weird spot with a couple of cards, which was you put the Gordian out. So mm-hmm. this made these basically blank. Yeah. Because you also had Ice Carver and tokens yeah, on that. just dead. And then not only that, but then you had the, if I have five cards in hand, I give you a free card. So both of these pieces of ice, this is the, this is mm-hmm. actually where it Yeah, was. that's where it was. Um, but it was like, well, I have a click. I don't really need the money. I can start setting up a win server. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I wouldn't have been doing that. Well, that, that's the amazing thing, too, though, is that, like, this was so wide open. And it was getting access, like, constantly but all your best ice was over here, and whenever it came time for that to matter, it was like, oh no, that's that's where the barriers are. Yeah. Finally found them. I think a lot of people would be tempted to be like, oh, they're getting into HQ too easily. Got to put the wall of thorns here. But really, it's about making a safe place for an agenda. Yeah. I mean, like no matter where that is. And that's what I kept the, the for a while. Like I would have two of these in my hand, uh, but once I had this set up and I knew it would be tough for you to get in. Now you did have the turtle. What was mm-hmm. his name? Amakua. Amakua. Yeah. And a ton of tokens. Yeah. And so there was a turn there where it was like even my Wall of Thorns wasn't doing it. Yeah. But that's where I had the Seeker, so I wanted you to score. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, <laughs> I, I put over, I put the Atlas down. And it's like, well, even if he gets in, yeah. I'm going to get rid of the turtle. Regardless. And then way. I can actually start scoring what I want. If he doesn't get in, I get three points. That's and, right. And that's what, is, particularly as Corp, a lot of times it looks like, which is give yourself a situation where if you score it, you're advancing tempo. If they score it, you have some way of, especially with Wayland, uh, making them pay for, for gaining that advantage. Yeah, and I had, so I had a couple of, of options here too. One of the important things to, to recognize from this game is this is a deck that actually doesn't have multi-access in it. Like there's no, and it's harder now because we've lost a lot of things from that basic core set, like medium. So there's no multi-access happening, which means that even though this was very porous, like the pressure that I was able to put on was actually just one card accesses, which yeah. a lot of times is just not enough. You know, say only one me two points. Well, and that's uh, what like when I when I go through the agendas in my deck, um, I actually have a handful of threes. Mm-hmm. And so because three of my agendas are threes, I had just my agenda density is not very high. Yeah. Um, and that means that if you're only hitting one card a turn, yeah, it's tough. The odds the odds are lower and. You could have, you know, hit a card on my deck every turn of the whole game, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think you did most turns, but you just didn't hit. 
Yeah. And then even when you're hitting my hand, you didn't hit. And so, but that's, that's also why whenever we're talking about deck building, when you say multi-access is an important facet, like if I had had an indexing, for instance, Could have if I had had game. a maker's eye, if I had had even an HQ interface or anything that was going to, you know, get me more cards, now all of a sudden, the gamble that you're playing, like putting all your best dice over here and waiting for agendas, is now being punished sufficiently to give me the advantage. And that's why when we talk about multi-access being a big deal, most every deck probably needs to look at some a little sort of bit of multi-access yeah. because you you just have to be able to punish a corp that is letting you in their central servers. And I, I mean, I get the sense from your deck at least, and we'll see in the blog, I suppose, <laughs> uh, that there's kind of a, a, a trap you're, you're setting mm -hmm. where like you do have three bad pub, I saw that current. Yeah. So if you play that current and my hand size is now two, yep. then no, you don't really need multi-access. And that's, that's really what the deck is designed to do. Um, Hitting you hit the itinerant protesters early out of hand with the snare, right? So I was not expecting that. I didn't want to play it early because I know you have hostile takeover, so yeah. you can just clear it out. Yeah, and I did um, literally have hostile takeover. Yeah, but right now, like if I was able to play that a couple of turns before the end of this game, that becomes very difficult because now I'm hitting HQ and I'm seeing one out of two cards. So where's the three point? Well, and go? your if I'm at max hand size, if my max hand size is two, and I'm just drawing, you just get the cards, yeah. right? And that's what I mean. You also had the the mid game, and this is it happens, but luckily Netrunner is a game that you can do this in. But you were just drawing, right? Mm -hmm. You're diesel, diesel. I've had worse, yeah, because you're looking for a way out, because you know an ice wall is going to stop you. I know. Once Almakua went away, I was literally like twenty cards away or ten cards away from that next breaker, and it's like well, I need to get something. I'm so exposed right now, like I yeah. can't do anything. And I think that's what, like, <clears throat> even early, I I did the snare and also the seeker to get rid of your program, mm -hmm. right? But like, I took a serious potential tempo hit, because yeah. I'm on no money, and you knew yeah. I was on no money. I had two I've had worse, too. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you drew your cards back up, right, especially from that snare. So, But then you look at the mid-game and how that played out, because I got rid of that program, mm -hmm. and it basically shut you down. It shut down, it definitely shut down the the, the, the wind barrier. server. And once you have one piece of ice that you just can't get through, it becomes very difficult. <laughs> I'm going to draw. You have to hit centrals lot. and hope for the best. Um, so there you go. That, that pretty much is it. We saw here an Anarch deck that actually kind of got set up. You could see how that's kind of wanting to, to function. And especially if you're not dealing with Scorpios, right? So this is a, a, every corp offers a different challenge for the runner. And so whenever you're trashing my programs, literally removing them from the game, uh, and using cards like Hunter Seeker, which is a great card regardless of Scorpio's ability, that ability to get set up and start to really punish the corporation is a lot harder. And so it, it takes me back, it swings that tempo back in the other direction, gives some openings to score out some points. Um, so we see, saw that here, and we saw Wayland just offering a lot of threats. We saw how scary Snare can be. Like if I had hit that with two cards in hand, the game is over. So that's a potential problem. And that's even stronger when you're not playing as Anarch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because I've had worse is great. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> the advertising. Game so thank you for watching, wish. guys. These are, again, these are decks built with a very kind of limited budget in mind. There's just the three releases that you need. The, this is a Crimson Dust data pack. Uh, I'm using an Order and Chaos box, X using Terminal Directive, and then we're both using the revised core set. And literally could build both of these decks out of a single pack, two box expansions, and a revised core set. Which is pretty good. Um, which is crazy, right? And, and we try to make them as good as possible. And special thanks to Spags for a uh, member of the Netrunner community, longtime member, great a contributor in all things, runs an event at Worlds, King of Servers, just has always been great. And I asked him to help us build these decks out of with that in mind, and he helped, and that's why we have what we have. So thanks to him, and if you want to see what has been built, check out the blog, uh, the deck lists are in there, as well as how to play, and even we usually write the blogs after these games, so things that we might have learned during this game that we can share with you ahead of time. Uh, so thanks for watching, and catch more of our Learning Netrunner series. We've got so much more coming. I am so happy to be playing Netrunner again. <laughs> it's back. Tell you. <laughs> if you want more of these kinds of videos, you can check the rest of our Learning Netrunner series. You can also click over to our blog via the description in this video to find deck lists for everything used here, as well as more detailed information. We've also got revised course sets on the store, data tokens, and our subscription service to send you every product as it comes out. Thanks for watching.